friends, my name is Numan Arshad and I am an International Project Management Trainer. In this video, we will learn about critical path method and I will tell you very simple method to understand the critical path method and to do the critical path calculations. So we will do this, uh, we will calculate the critical path using a very simple example, okay. Uh, as you know that critical path is used, critical path method is used to calculate the project duration and it tells us uh, what is the longest path through the project network diagram and also the shortest duration. So in this slide, we are having a very simple scenario and the left hand side we are having some activities, activity A, activity B, activity C, activity D, activity E, activity F and activity G. And on the right hand side, we have some immediately preceding activities, okay. And on the right side, on the right corner, we are having the duration of these activities. So let us start with the, uh, let us proceed with the first step. Okay, in step one, we will convert these activities, we will convert these activities into the node format. So, in this, this is the node format. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see in the right corner that this is the legend which shows the different components of the activity node. For example, in the middle, we have the activity name. This left hand side, this shows the early start and it's appearing over here. Then we have the early finish. Then we have late start, late finish, and in the middle, we have the total float. So, uh, as you see, these there are seven activities, and I have highlighted the duration of these activities. So the first step is clear. Now, in second step, we will concert, construct the network diagram. Okay, how do we do the? How we construct the network diagram? Once we know the activities name and give duration, another information that we require is the the information about activities predecessors and successors. So, and the right hand side. You see that these are the activities and this IPA shows the immediate preceding activities as this is given in the question itself. So, uh, you can see here that activity A is preceded with activity B, activity A is also preceded with activity C, activity B is preceded by activity D and activity B and C is preceded by E. Similarly, you can see these all activities. Okay. Now, what we will do, we will draw the we will connect these activities together by finish to start relationships okay these are the finish to start relationships and these this this shows the logical relationship of the different activities together if you look at the diagram you can see the activity a has two successors activity b and activity c similarly activity b also has two successors activity d and activity e if we look at activity c we have activity c has Two successors activity E and activity F and similarly if we look at activity G activity G has three predecessors which is activity D activity E and activity F okay we have constructed the network diagram so in step 3 we calculate the forward pass and we know that forward pass is used to calculate early start and early finish of an activity so how we will start this forward start is start from left to right this is what this arrow shows and the first activity in this uh, network is activity A and by convention we have taken the early start of this activity is 0 okay S uh, generally we use this 0 sometime we take as uh, we, we also take 1 as a start but for simplicity I have taken 0 as a convention this is also known as end of the day convention in project management so uh, this is 0 now we are we we are interested to calculate the early finish of activity A so how we will calculate it by using very very simple formula you just see over here early finish is equals to early start plus duration and if we put the values in this equation early finish is equal to what is the early start it is 0 and duration is 5 so 0 plus 5 is 5 uh, furthermore uh, we also want to calculate the early start of, of of the rest of the activity so how we will do that so let's take the example of activity b so in activity b this is the formula which shows that early start of a successor activity is equals to early finish of a predecessor activity. So we know that predecessor to activity B is activity A. So what did we do? We replicated 5 from this early finish into the early start. Okay, And this is how we will calculate the early start of successor activities. Similarly, by using this method, we will be calculating all other numbers as it is shown by these arrows okay st step three is done now the fourth step in the cpa method is backward pass and in backward pass we calculate the late start and late finish of the activity so 
how we will calculate this this arrow shows the direction from uh, uh, from right to left which means that we are doing the backward pass okay so there is one assumption we will take that the, like we did the assumption for the first activity the assumption for the last activity of uh, any network is that late finish of an activity is equal to early finish so we know the early finish of activity g is 23 so what we will do we will replicate this number and we will put the late finish as 23 then we also want to calculate the late start as you know the backward pass is used to calculate both late finish and late start so let us uh, look at this formula the late start of this activity will be equal to late finish minus duration so let us put put the number in this equation which is 23 minus 1 and this is equal to 22 okay uh, let us take one more example in this diagram that we also want to calculate the late finish of the predecessor activity so for example we have here activity D and the formula for this is we will be replicating the number from its successor and how we will calculate this thing the late finish of a predecessor this is the predecessor to activity G the late finish of a predecessor will be equal to the late start of successor okay and here we have the 22 number so we will, replic we will replicate 22 into this box and you can also see that here I am also showing the min uh, in case when we have multiple uh, when we have multiple successors and we want to calculate the late finish of a predecessor using the successor so in that case we use the minimum number for example if you look at here activity b has two successors activity d and activity e now the late start of activity d is 13 and the late start of activity e is 16 so in this case we will take activity uh, we will take 13 as the late finish of activity b as it is shown over here in, in, in the diagram. So similarly we will be calculating all the other numbers as shown, shown by the arrows. So after completing the backward pass you will have all late start and late finish of entire activities in, in the network diagram. So what will be the fifth step? Okay in fifth step we will be calculating the total floats. Okay as you know you have heard about this thing sometime we also call total floats as the flags. So total float is the maximum amount of time by which an activity can be delayed from its early start without delaying the entire project this is the very standard definition and uh, in this step we will be calculating the total float so let us see as it is uh, highlighted by the yellow color so what is the formula of total float the formula of total float is total float which is equal to late finish minus early finish or it may be late start minus early start so let us apply these formulas for activity a if you look at activity a the late start the uh, the late start and the early start is 0 and 0 so 0 minus 0 is 0 so in this way by using this formula we will be calculating all the total floats in entire network diagram okay in step 6 the last step in this case we will calculate the critical path as it is shown in the red color the uh, we discussed in the beginning of the video that that the uh, that the critical path is the longest path with the shortest duration duration and it has total float it uh, the the total float on the critical path is always zero so let us apply these definitions on this uh, diagram so if you look at activity a it has zero total float activity b zero total float activity d zero total float activity g zero, zero total float and this is the longest path as you you see that this is activity 5 this will be uh, finished on uh, on fifth day for example then this will be on 30th, 13th this will be on 22nd and this will be completed on 23rd so in this way this is the longest path and the total duration of the project is 23 units so these this these are the six steps by using which you can calculate the critical path on of any network diagram and it is very step by step and very easy method.